Continuing on the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge series I've been doing where I break down individual features and do a thorough review on those features, today I wanna to talk about software. You know, last time we did hardware, now it's time to look at what's running this thing. Now it's still TouchWiz, but it's running on top of Android 6.01, which is Android Marshmallow, and it's phenomenal. Samsung has really done a great job at toning down TouchWiz. Um, it's still, you know, TouchWiz, however, it flies, it runs really, really good, and it still gives you the plethora of features that TouchWiz has been known for. With Android Marshmallow, you get a few features that separate it from previous software iterations. And one of those features is Google Now on Tap. I love Google Now on Tap, and it flies on the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge. What Google Now on Tap does is gives you information based off what's being displayed on your screen. For instance, if I did a Google search for the Sony F65, held down the home button, it's going to give me sources to find more information on the F65, including a place to buy it. Like I said, TouchWiz has been improved. It's much more snappier, even over the Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge. And they've done a great job at keeping things, for the most part, minimal while not taking away too many features. But at the end of the day, I still had to throw Nova Launcher on my phone because TouchWiz to me is just really ugly. Some of the new features in TouchWiz include the always-on display. Now, this is not a new feature per se when it comes to other smartphone makers, but it's new for Samsung and they've done a great job at implementing this. We've seen this same feature found on the Moto X series. And the original Moto X was an AMOLED display and it did a great job at giving you information while conserving battery life. And the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge is exactly the same. In fact, in my testing, I found there to be no difference in leaving this on versus leaving it turned off when it came to my battery life. Some features are carrier specific and I have the AT&T version, but one of the features that separates the AT&T version from say the T-Mobile variant is the ability to control the touch light duration. So I can set it to 1.5 seconds, six seconds, have it completely turned on or turned off. And that actually conserves battery life quite a bit if you just leave it turned off. I usually keep mine between 1.5 to six seconds. Another feature Samsung has implemented into this version of TouchWiz is the keep turned off feature. Now what this does is it allows the phone to detect whether it's in a closed environment like your pocket, a backpack, a purse, and it's not going to allow the phone to have that screen turned on accidentally. Of course, like all the previous Galaxy devices, or at least the more recent ones, uh, you still have the theme store and you also have the Galaxy App Store. I tend to stay away from the Galaxy App Store because I can find everything in the Google Play Store. However, the theme store is pretty cool because it allows you to theme things that Nova can't theme, such as uh, your quick toggles and your notification shade or your settings. And I've been using the Material Blue, which I picked up from Kevin the Tech Ninja. I love blue, it's my favorite color. And when he showed that in his recent video on what was on his Galaxy S7 Edge, I had to get it. If you're a mobile gamer, you're absolutely going to love Samsung's new games feature. It gives you many different features built into one feature, if that makes any sense. First of all, it sorts your games and keeps them organized and easy to find in one central location. You just tap on the games um, app icon and then boom, there's all your games. And if you don't see your games there, you can manually add them. Honestly, that's not even the beginning of this whole new games feature that Samsung has implemented though. It gives you in-game controls, so you don't need a third-party app anymore to do a screen recording for gameplay, or to take a screenshot, or to minimize the game so you can respond to a text, or go look for a cheat code, or something like that, and then go right back to your game by clicking the little app bubble. It's amazing, and it gives you a lot of intuitive controls, and it runs really, really good. To browse all your screenshots or your screen recordings, they're located right there in your gallery, and it creates a folder automatically with the title of the game that you did your screen recordings in or your screenshots. Really, really awesome. And it, like I said, it just runs and works perfectly. Android Marshmallow also introduced battery optimization. And battery optimization is going to do exactly as I just said. It's gonna keep all your apps optimized for low battery use to conserve battery life and prolong battery life. So your phone's gonna last you longer throughout the day. I tend to always go back and check this uh, routinely and make sure all of my apps stay optimized. It's located right there in your battery settings and it's super easy to use and I haven't noticed any performance change uh, whether my apps have been optimized or not. So 
a great addition to TouchWiz through Android Marshmallow. So let's talk about some not so new features, such as the one-handed mode, still there, triple click the home button, and it actually reduces the screen size, giving you control over the full display with one hand, and you can shift it from left to right. Works great. To go along with that, you have the quick launch camera feature, you know, double press the home button, boom, there's your camera, really fast, and it works great. You also have the pop view feature, which basically shrinks your apps into smaller windows and you can put multiple windows on your display. That way you can see multiple apps at one time. Works great, but not so good for smaller displayed devices. Even though um, the Galaxy S7 Edge is a 5.5 inch display, it's still not big enough to really house this feature. Even the 5.7 inch display found on the Note, I felt uh, didn't do this specific feature justification. This is more like of a tablet feature, but it does work great and it is still there. You still have all the gestures you've either grown to love, hate, or just not even realize they were there such as the palm capture feature, which I really hate this feature. It's pointless and useless and non-functional. Smart capture is a feature that was handed off from the Note series and I love it. It gives you the ability to do a scroll capture and share you know, right there on the spot. You also have app permissions, which is more of an Android marshmallow type of thing. But what it does is it gives you the ability to grant specific permissions for specific apps. They've updated panels a little bit, giving you a little bit more options and more in-depth control over them um, you can access different things like a ruler a, a compass which is built into the same tab um, you can do your favorite contacts um, favorite apps uh, quick launch settings for specific apps uh, the list just goes on and on and on you also have your feed which gives you things like stocks the news your missed notifications all of that jazz at a simple caress of a finger while your display is turned off um, on your lock screen, of course. And it just gives you it in that little tiny bar or the edge screen for easy viewing, I guess. I never use it. Of course, you have edge lighting and it works and functions just like before. You match a color to a favorite contact and when you have your phone face down, um, the edge screen is going to glow and flash that color to let you know that contact is calling you. Works great, I love it, love the idea of it, but if you're like me, you probably hardly ever set your phone face down. So again, it's not that functional, just a really cool party trick. In any case, the edge screen's functionality has really come a long way from the original Galaxy Note Edge, if you remember that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next one, which I think we're gonna take a look at gaming, the internal specifications, and how well they perform. So go ahead and follow me on all my social media connections. Drop me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, go ahead and drop me a thumbs up anyways, because that's what people should do. That's how we should treat each other. I mean, we should all have respect for one another, right? Yeah, okay. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Be easy.